this is it, number 99, and I can't think of any other game better than Sonic Heroes. Well, I can think of a lot more better games than Sonic Heroes, but considering the horrors that await next week, uh, this was the better choice. I had this at my number 6 spot on my top 10 best Sonic games list, and it was also the first Sonic game to be on all platforms. It was the first Sonic game on the Xbox and PlayStation 2. Takashi Iizuka didn't want Sonic Heroes to be a continuation of the Sonic Adventure series, because he felt that only hardcore Sonic fans would purchase it if the game was titled Sonic Adventure 3. So he decided to make a game that would appeal to everyone, not just Sonic fans. And of course, Sonic fans were divided. They always are, and it doesn't shock me because they can never agree on anything. Some like it, some hate it, others see it as mediocre. But since no one knows what they want in a Sonic game anymore, the opinions can't be taken seriously. Mainstream game critics have nothing but contempt for Sonic. Even when giving a Sonic game a good score, they portray it in a negative light. Sonic fans can't agree on what constitutes a good Sonic game, so it's hard to gauge anything from all their bickering. That's where people like me come in. I like Sonic games, but I would not call myself a Sonic fan. Because the Sonic games change style as they go along, I think it's illogical to look at one game and compare it to the rest of the series. Instead, I look at the game that I'm reviewing as it stands by itself, only comparing it to the others in the series when it's absolutely necessary. When a long-running series like Sonic the Hedgehog changes over time, can you really compare a new game in the series to an old one? Well, you can, but it's complicated. If we look at Metal Gear Solid, the series has largely stayed the same. The gameplay was centered around stealth with some tweaks to the gameplay over the years. It stayed the same because of the target audience being older players, so nothing really needed to be changed because the target demographic is mature gamers who can understand the mechanics and the story. Sonic's demographic is younger players. But there are longtime fans of the series who were kids when Sonic came about, and those players are now older. So not only does Sega have to make a game that will bring in the younger crowd, but they also have to try and appeal to the longtime fans of the series without sacrificing Sonic's trademark speed. But if you want a Sonic game with platformings, Sonic Heroes is for you. There's so many platforms, it's like a warehouse of scaffolding. This is the most platforming a Sonic game has ever had. I don't even know what to do with all these platforms. Sure, there's really only one way to go, but I can fly over the platforms, jump, over them or break through them. If platforms give you a boner, you should be rock hard right now. I see no reason to complain about the lack of platforms in a Sonic game when it comes to this title. In fact, there are so many platforms that I could see a reason to complain that there's too many platforms. The number of platforms in this game is too damn high! I'm playing the PS2 version, when I'd much rather be playing the Xbox One, but I couldn't find a copy of that anywhere. But I have played all four versions. The Xbox is my preferred one as on a 360, it loads incredibly fast. While there's nothing different gameplay-wise with the PS2 version, it does suffer from the slowest load times, bad frame rate, and pixelated textures. I was hoping to find a PC version, but that is incredibly rare, even on the day of release. Also, the PC version, like Sonic Adventure DX's PC version, has issues with controller compatibility. I didn't show it in my Sonic Adventure DX review, but if you stood still and didn't move, the camera would point upward and spin around. Go home, camera. You're drunk. In all versions, the graphics are bright and colorful and the level design is very Sonic-like. The music is very high-paced and fast. It matches the levels and goes with the way the level looks. The voice acting is also really good. Ryan Drummond actually puts emotion into voicing Sonic and doesn't give that dead, emotionless performance he gave in the previous games. Tails has a new voice actor again, but it sounds like he has a cold. The rest of the characters have good voicing and are acted out well. However, I think Big the Cat is pretty offensive. His lines in Sonic Adventure weren't bad, but this game makes him sound downright mentally handicapped. Tails, Cream, and Charmy, who are the youngest characters, sound way more mature than Big, who sounds way more childish. And this is the last time we'd ever see Big in the main series of games only appearing as spin-offs, and I think it's because Big can be considered very offensive to the mentally handicapped. And when a character is deemed offensive, they usually remove them or make them fade into the background. But anyway, it's a good thing the voice acting is good because the characters talk to each other constantly, usually dropping hints on what to do or where to go. But there's also banter or they comment on what they see in the level. Cream does have a horrible voice though. She sounds like Tolly from South Park. One thing I do find irritating is that Tails comes off as completely helpless in this game. It's an extreme personality shift and is the opposite of what he should be. As you can see, you take control of teams of three, each character representing speed, flight, light, or power, and you use these formations to travel through the levels. Your four teams are Team Sonic, composed of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, 
Team Dark, which has Shadow making his return from the dead, Rouge, and newcomer E-123 Omega. Team Rose has Amy, Cream, and Lenny from Mice of Men. Finally, the Chaotic make a return minus Mighty the Armadillo, so we have Espio, Charmy, and Vector. Throughout the game, you'll be switching between the three formations, although I find myself using the speed formation the most, followed by the flight formation as the thunder shoot attack is extremely overpowered when leveled up. Yes, you can level up the characters up to a max of three, which will increase the strength of their attacks. At the time of its release, Sonic Heroes was the closest we were going to get to a classic Sonic game in 3D. And of course, people still complained. There's a total of seven worlds, each with two stages and a boss stage. The boss stages follow a pattern. First you fight Eggman, then another team, then it's waves of Eggman robots that spawn like waves of children in an unsuccessful marriage. No matter which team you play as, you go through all the stages in the same order, just at different lengths and difficulties. The special stages make a return, but you can tell that they were thrown in at the last minute because you get stuck on the walls and ceiling a lot, making it very difficult to complete them, and it's the only way to get the Chaos Emeralds. Team Rose is the easy setting, or as I like to call it, balanced mode. It has the right amount of difficulty and the right amount of enemies, and they also have the shortest stages and are only about a quarter in length. Team Sonic is supposed to be the medium difficulty, but that's a lie, it's actually pretty difficult. There's more enemies and the stages are longer. Team Dark is hard mode, but you can actually feel yourself being penetrated through your pants. And they have the longest stages because they go through some alternate routes. Team Chaotix has a mission-based type of game. And those stages end when you complete the mission. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't play Team Chaotix this time. To play the game four times in a row is not much of an incentive to get the last story. I played the Xbox version to completion twice, but here I just have no desire to do so. The game is unnecessarily long. The stages overstay their welcome, sometimes averaging close to 15 minutes long to complete. No level in any Sonic game should take that long to complete. You either need a lot of patience to play this game, or play it in short bursts. And I just don't have the patience for this game like I used to, nor do I have the time if I want to meet a weekly deadline. After the casino areas, I was just too frustrated to go on, but I pushed myself to keep playing for the sake of the review. The casino area is just horrible. The pinball physics don't even work for a good portion of the time. You're told that you can control the direction you can go, but in reality, just barely sometimes. Not at all the rest of it. The flippers are either delayed or the characters just slide off or pass through them. Sonic Heroes is one of those games that's difficult for the wrong reasons. It's pretty much Sonic on ice. There is no traction whatsoever in this game. It's like running on a sheet of Teflon. You gain momentum very easily, and once you have that momentum, it's very hard to lose. I find myself spinning around in circles just to slow down when landing on small platforms. The game is programmed for you to gain momentum quickly, and to be able to keep that momentum. But the levels are not designed for that. The levels are better suited for platforming without the high speed action. This is exactly what I was talking about in my Sonic Adventure DX review. If you want more platforming, speed has to be sacrificed, otherwise you get this as a result. And this is the perfect example of something that I try to stress to people a lot. Either they ignore it, or they just choose not to accept it. Not every game is going to be as good as you remember. If you play a game that you enjoyed back when you were younger but play it now and find yourself not liking it, it's natural. Maybe your taste in games has changed. Maybe you've been spoiled by newer and more sophisticated games. Maybe you never noticed the problems. Or it's possible that the game was always crap and you're now seeing it for what it is. But back on topic, I've been Sonic teamed several times. Like the light dash not working, only collecting the first ring and falling into a bottomless pit, or the rocket excel, which never works when you want it to, decides to happen instead and sending me into a bottomless pit. Oh yeah, this game is an endless buffet of bottomless pit sheet cake. There aren't many bottomless pits in the first two areas, but from the casino area forward, the main method you'll die from is bottomless pits. And the levels get longer and longer while the platforms get narrower and narrower and the checkpoints get further and further apart. And falling into pits will mostly be due to glitches. I rarely die to an enemy, and the times that I did, it was because you barely get that brief few seconds of invulnerability. You take a hit, you lose your rings, and you lay on the ground for a few seconds. And the second you get back up, your invincibility is gone. The only good thing is that your teammates may collect your rings for you if you're lucky. That's if they're not knocked down already. And if they're knocked down, you can't switch to them. If you're in the air, you can't switch formation, so if you're about to fall into a pit, you can't save yourself by switching to flight formation. But your non-flying characters can defy gravity as much as they want, so they must be wizards. There's no other logical explanation cause Sonic Team doesn't make bad games. Let's wrap this up. The story is lighthearted and pretty simple. Team Sonic is trying to stop Eggman from taking over the world as usual. That guy needs a new hobby. Team Dark is looking for Eggman to ask why Shadow was in a capsule and for Omega to kill him. Team Rose is looking for Team Sonic because the team leader is Amy and, well, she's Amy. And they're looking for a chocolate-colored Chow and for Big's pet frog. 
again. Team Chaotix is trying to help a client who turns out to be Eggman because in the last story, the whole thing was orchestrated by Metal Sonic to try and kill Sonic. I have just saved you 20 hours of frustrating gameplay. You're welcome. I don't want to say that the game has aged badly, but it hasn't aged well either. I give them a lot, and I mean a lot of credit for this attempt. The team-based gameplay is really innovative, and I would like to see them try the style again, because there are times when the game is really fun. But there are times when it's just so frustrating that I want to rage quit. I can see why people don't like this game. I really can. The game is far from perfect, but there's a lot of good ideas in the game. If they fine-tuned some of the things like the slippery physics, it could have been a really good game. But I'm going to replace this game on my top 10 best Sonic games with Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Part 2. This is one of those games that walks the line of good and bad. It's worth trying, and who knows, you might have a better time than I did. Or maybe a worse one.